Okay, welcome back. So today, I would like to talk about ethics, principle, and assumption in accounting. And before we open up our today topic, I just wanted to notice that our slide are being quite messing up a bit because I have been putting too many texts in it. However, all of those are very imperative. It is the accounting orientation which we need to know before we take a gander at the accounting's activity basis. So let's make accounting easy again. Okay, without further ado, we're gonna crop up with a question. Why do we need to know about ethics, principle, and assumptions in accounting? Before I answer this question, I'm gonna touch on an example. If you wanted to be a taxi driver, First thing first, you would need to learn how to drive a car, right? After work, you will be learned about ethical behaviors when you are in traffic. That's why you need to obey the traffic principle as well as the traffic assumption, which is based on the country you have been being. However, a successful taxi driver totally depends on ethical behaviors. With this in mind, which is the same in accounting, if you are an accountant, you have to meet certain accounting principles and accounting assumptions for the presentation of financial statement. There is no doubt that is a prosperous financial statement must be adhering to ethical behaviors. Okay, we're gonna meet up the first ethics concept in accounting. So the ethics in accounting is mean how the accounting's decision is criticized as right or wrong, honest or dishonest, and fair or not fair in recording financial statement. Now, we are continuing with an example and see is that supposed to be an ethical behavior or not. So read the example from the slide and you can see that the accountant's decision was that he faked the accounting statistic which aimed to get as much as leverage in a submit. Under those circumstances, the accounting's activities are judged as an unethical decision. Okay, that was easy to decide which one is right or wrong, right? However, in real life, it will be extremely complicated. Next, we are going to argue about accounting principles. First thing first, we will question, what is accounting principle? So shortly, the accounting principles are the fixed guideline which we need to adhere when we are recording financial statement. For example, GAAP, its acronym stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principle which have been issued by the Financial Accounting Standard Board. Its abbreviation is FASB. It has been accepted widely in the United States. Furthermore, intentionally, we got the IFRS, which stands for International Financial Reporting Standard, that have been issued by the International Accounting Standard Board, or you can say IASB. If you are not clear yet, we're gonna go into the detail right now. Alright, we are not done with accounting principle yet. So now we're gonna talk about measurements principles. That's underlay GAAP. Moreover, the measurement principles are containing two particular principles which are the historical cost principle and the fair value principle. When I'm talking to you here, someone gonna question like, what should we use the measurement principle for? As we have been talking about earlier, that the accounting principle generally are the standard that indicate how to record accounting events. So now we're gonna together check out the first type of measurement principles, which is the historical cost principle. So basically, the historical cost principle helps us lay the company's asset down on the financial statements at their code. That is true not only at the time the asset is purchased, but also over the time the asset is held. And if you want to know more about the historical cost principle, you could refer to the example in the slide, okay? Next, we're gonna go on with the fair value principle which has a bit similar compared to the historical cost principle. To put it briefly, the fair value principle is how the accountant records the company's materials and debts at their fair value or you can say with a fancy word which is the market value. And to say time, I think you could read and analyze the example in the slide by yourself, okay? Because I wrote everything there. 
So, as you have been noticing that I have been taking the same examples throughout the historical cost principle and the fair value principle in order to determine the difference between them. Therefore, we could easily recognize the distinction which is in the historical cost principle whenever the house prices increase or decrease by any environmental and financial factors. We just record the house price at the time the house was purchased, which is at exactly 100,000. Why the fair value principle records the fair value house price after five years, which is correctly a three hundred thousand, and that is all. Okay, so we're gonna keep going to assumption in accounting. If I was not wrong, there was five assumption in accounting. However, today I'm going to share with you guys just two of them, which are the most fundamental and crucial. It is the monetary unit assumption and economic entity assumption. If you guys want to study more about it, you guys can search Google with the keyword assumptions in accounting. By the way, we can smoothly get the assumptions concept in accounting is that it hands over the basis for the accounting process and the form of how financial transactions are reported. If you are not clear yet, we're gonna go into the detail right now. Okay, without any first and delay, we're gonna begin with the monetary unit assumption. So the first concept of the monetary unit assumption is the economic events of a company that must be represented and calculated in monetary terms. The other one is quite obvious, so I think you could read and analyze the example by yourself. Okay, next, before we head to the second concept of monetary unit assumption, we're gonna do a little bit of analysis because the economics events must be represented and calculated in a particular currency unit which is supposed highly stable. Therefore, in recording financial statement, we will ignore inflation as well as deflation. And this is also the second concept of the monetary unit assumption. So to understand deeply about it, I think you should read the example in the slide by yourself. Okay, next is economic entity assumption. First, we might be questioned that what is the economic entity? So undoubtedly, the economic entity could be any company or unit in society. Therefore, the economic entity assumption is how we can distinguish and separate the financial events of the economic entity and the recorded financial events of owners, associates, lenders, or associated companies. Furthermore, we're gonna figure out three main kinds of economic entity in society, which are proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. So, this is the first kind of economic entity that is a proprietorship. There are two questions we need to be transparent about. First, what is a proprietorship? So, obviously, the proprietorship is the state of being that you are the only owner or operator of the business. For instance, you own a hair salon, you own an antique shop, and you own a bookstore. The second question is, how is a proprietor's role being treated in a company? The proprietor is the only person in a company who takes own responsibility for losses as well as gaining in running the business. In the addition, the proprietor also pays back the company's debts personally. Furthermore, in recording financial statement, the accounting records of the business activity must be kept separate from the personal record and owner's activity. Okay, next, there is the second kind of economic entity that is a partnership. So the partnership is the business that's constricted by a structure agreement between two or more persons to manage and run a business. For instance, doctors and lawyers can be formed a partnership. There is some famous partnerships such as Uber and Spotify, Apple and Mastercard. In the same way, like proprietorship, in partnership got to share profits and losses equally, regardless how much partners contribute. However, individual partners are responsible for the partnership debts. Moreover, in counting, we must separate the 
recording financial activity of a partnership and the recording financial partners' personal activities. Lastly, there is the third kind of economics entity that is a corporation. This kind is charted with being different compared to partnership and proprietorship. It means the corporate is a business structure as a distinct legal entity and having ownership slip into transferable share of stock, for instance, Apple and Walmart. Furthermore, the corporation's owners or we can say stockholders enjoy limited liability. It implies that they can sell own or part of their ownership shares to anybody at any time. However, they are not personally responsible for the debts of the company. Okay. So finally, we are done with the theory part. So I have been preparing some easy reviewing question, and we're gonna put it to bed together. So first, ethics are not important in the presentation of financial accounting, which is true or false. Let's see the answer. The answer is false, right? Why? Because coming back when we were talking about why we need to know about ethics, principle, and assumption in accounting, then we can sum it up that effective financial statements depend on ethical behaviors. Therefore, ethics are the most important in the presentation of financial accounting. That is understandable. The second is there are tons of separate kind of economic entity for accounting purpose, which is true or false. Let's see the answer. The answer is four, right? Because it just got three precisely. The third is there is nothing different between historical cost principle and the fair value principle, which is true or false. Let's see the answer. The answer is four, right? Because the historical cost principle, we record the company assets on the financial statement of their cost at the time the assets is purchased, as well as over the time the assets is held. And in the fair value principle, is how we record the company's materials and debts at fair value. The final is accounting principle are not compulsory that people can follow any principles they want to apply, which is true or false. Let's see the answer. The answer is false, right? Because the accounting principle as well as accounting assumption are the guideline that accountants must obey in presenting financial statement. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap up everything that we have been discussing so far. Firstly, we have been talking about ethics, principle, and assumption in accounting. Moreover, it is noted that in accounting, we need to follow certain guidelines for the presentation of financial statement. This criteria will be based on basic principle and assumptions. Moreover, ethical practice must be a central rule in reporting financial statement for this principle and assumption to work. Finally, we were passing by the measurement principle of GAAP, as well as monetary unit assumption and economic entity assumption in recording financial statement. So this is all for this video, and the next video will be about accounting equations. So Thumb if you like it and sub if you love it and see you in the next video. Peace.